हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस्ट वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts updates and recent exams. Part 1. You will hear a male student talking to a union representative about placing an advertisement to sell a laptop. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Hi, I'm Debbie. How can I help? Hi. My name's David. I'm just looking to place an advertisement on the main union notice board to sell a laptop and a few accessories if that's possible. Sure, that's not a problem. I take it you are a member of the students' union? Yes, I am. Right then. I'll just get a form up. And as there is no one around and it looks as if it's going to be quiet for a while, I'll just type the details straight into the computer for you. Thanks very much. No problem. Shall we just title it laptop for sale? Yeah, okay. Can you describe it generally? Well, it's in very good condition. In fact, it's hardly been used. Why are you selling it, if I may ask? Well, I've got another one which is much lighter and I don't really need two. I see. What weight is the one you're selling? It's uh, 3.5 kilograms. That is heavy these days. Can you give more details about the one you want to sell? Right. Uh well, it's an Allegro and it's got all the latest programs. Okay. What about the memory? The memory is only 0.5 gigabytes. And what about the screen size and the other features? Oh well, uh the the screen is well, let's see it's uh 37.5 cm with a, a standard size keyboard and a touchpad. But I've got a cordless mouse that I can put in with it if necessary. Well, some people don't like using a touchpad. What about ports or holes for attaching things to the laptop? It's got two ports. Mm. More modern laptops have more than two ports for all the extra attachments. They do. Let's see uh, what else is important. Uh, oh yeah, the uh, the battery lasts for two and a half hours, which is okay, but not enough for long train journeys. Uh, but one thing is that it's not wireless. Right. Okay. Not wireless. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Anything else I can put on the advertisement? There's a webcam built at the top of the screen and uh, I can throw in a printer, a scanner and headphones which I I got with it in a special deal. It also comes with its own case for carrying it around. Uh, actually the case is quite smart. I'm hoping these things will help it sell. They should do. Right, I think I've got all that. How much do you want for it? That I'm not sure about. Uh, it's worth about nine hundred pounds to a thousand pounds new. Yeah, but you won't get that much if it's used, and even if it's in good condition. What about five hundred pounds? I doubt if you'd get as much as that. More like two hundred pounds or three hundred pounds. If you look at the notice board, there is one on there which is comparable to yours, and it's not more than about two hundred and fifty pounds, I think. As little as that. I'm afraid so. 
Shall we say 300 pounds? Okay, put that. Can I take some contact details for the advert? The name's David Bristow. B R I S T O W. Yes, that's it. And uh, a mobile or email? Both, if you want. It's D I B underscore 7791 at hotmail.com. Okay, and the mobile? Uh, that's 09875 423387. That's it. If you send the picture, I'll add it and print it out and stick it up for you. Okay, I can get that to you today. Right, I'll type in here, advert placed the 22nd of October. Fine, and good luck with the sale. Thanks. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. She's going to talk to us today about the pleasures of running her own business. First, look at questions 11 to 14. Good morning and welcome to this month's Small Business Club meeting. I'm very pleased to welcome Amy Lynn, who owns and runs a catering business in the local area. She's going to talk to us today about the pleasures of running her own business. Amy. Thank you very much. Now, I started my business two years ago selling very high-quality ready-made meals using all organic ingredients sourced from the local area. And I have to say, it has been the happiest time of my life, with sales doing extremely well. I've had to work very hard, and this has meant a rather limited social life. <laughs> but I really value the fact that I'm my own boss, and I can decide what I do, you know, when I think I'm ready to try something new and creative, and when to continue with what I'm doing, and so forth. Now, I got the idea to produce these dishes when I was visiting a local supermarket and I looked at what was on offer in the ready meals section. Lots of low quality, unhealthy packs. And I thought, I could do so much better. I discussed it with friends. Some of them thought it was a great idea and others thought there wouldn't be a big enough market for such expensive products. But I went ahead with my idea anyway. And as I say, it's been very successful. At the moment, I employ two people, one to help me with the actual preparation and cooking and the other to work on the financial side, doing invoices and accounts and marketing. My business is expanding, but I'm not ready to employ anybody new just yet. At the moment, I'm negotiating with a local organic farmer who would like to sell my meals at his farm shop. We've already agreed that I will sell in his shop in the new year, but I just don't know how much. It probably won't be enormous. My sales in total at the moment are only about £7,000 a month. And at least for the next few months, I don't plan on increasing that. I think the thing which will make me take on new staff is if I just feel too exhausted and stop enjoying what I'm doing. And plans for the long-term future are a little vague at the moment. I've been thinking that in a couple of years' time, I'll start to sell on the internet. 
my sales will increase quite a bit. Um, I won't advertise because that might mean I would expand so fast that I couldn't continue to use all organic ingredients. And I'm very anxious to go on doing that. But I think I'll need a bigger kitchen and packing area. Otherwise, we'll get very cramped. Before the broadcast continues, look at questions 15 to 20. Now, I've emphasised how much pleasure I get out of running my own business, but, of course, one of the quickest ways to lose heart is to try operating without sufficient capital. So, in the second part of my talk, I want to share with you how I got enough money to finance my business. The most significant part of my capital came from a grant from the Small Business Agency, or SBA, as everyone calls it. And this is how you go about getting it. The first thing you have to do is to draw up a business plan. Now, don't make this too long and complicated. I would say it should just be up to two pages in length. I've seen some people's efforts go up to ten pages. Well, frankly, I don't think anyone will read it if it's that long. The next thing is it's worthwhile getting it checked. Now, don't rely on an accountant for this. Your best bet is to go to your bank and get them to look through it. Only if they're happy should you go ahead with your application. If all is well, then you should finalise your submission. Then your next step is to send it to the SBA. Now, they advise you not to do this by email, but by post. However, they say this situation might change in the near future. So, when the SBA receive your grant application, they'll judge whether your business idea is interesting, that is, likely to benefit from their grant. If they think it's good, they'll invite you to interview. And then, the successful candidates can get a maximum of £20,000. I got £18,000, which wasn't quite the top amount, but still enormously useful, as you can imagine. Now, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You are going to hear a lecture about the Miner's Hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Good evening and welcome to the Minor Hotel. We are pleased to have you as our guest. I will give you a brief information session to tell you everything you need to know to make this a pleasant stay. The Minor Hotel was built in the 1850s, during the Gold Rush period, also nicknaming our state the Golden State. People from all over the country and even from other countries came to seek their fortune here in these hills, creating cities overnight. In this city, many Gold Rush hotels soon opened up. This particular hotel was built in 1851, but was destroyed during an earthquake. It was rebuilt in 1995 to recreate the feel of the Gold Rush, complete with articles and actual photographs from during the 1850s. 
Our hotel is divided into two buildings, one called the Gold Tower and the other is named the Fortune Tower. You will be staying in the Fortune Tower on the 25th floor, complete with great views of the city. Your room is the best room in the hotel, complete with private living room and hot tub. Here is your room card. On the card it will say FT, meaning Fortune Tower. On the bottom of the card it will say 2515. The 25 stands for the 25th floor and the 15 stands for the 15th room on that particular floor. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. There are emergency exits in both towers of the hotel. They are located on the south side, opposite the elevators. Please use these in case of a fire or other emergency. We have some special events happening this week. Our Miner's Diner is offering a special Miner's Buffet dinner this Friday and Saturday for only $20 per person. This special includes all food, not including drinks and alcohol, and shows for the night. The buffet will be available from 5 to midnight. Because of the historical significance of our hotel, there are some special rules. The first rule is that there is no smoking allowed anywhere in the building, not even in your own room. This is not only to ensure the safety and health of our guests, but also the furniture and pictures can be easily damaged by smoke and other harsh treatment. Please remember that there are items of furniture over a hundred years old here, so respect the rules by not smoking. Secondly, please do not take pictures using a flash of any of the drawings and paintings in the rooms or hallways as they are old and fragile. We are doing our best to preserve a national treasure, so please help us in doing so. Lastly, you will only have one set of towels and bed sheets per three days. This is to conserve the water supply as there are frequent droughts this high up in the hills. If there are any further questions, the staff of the hotel will be available to answer your questions. In the event that no one is able to answer your questions, I will also be available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day in the concierge. I hope you enjoy your stay here with us. Thank you very much. That is the end of Part 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You are going to hear a talk about the tall ships race in Britain. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. In July 1956, a fleet of 21 sailing ships from 11 countries raced each other from Torbay in Devon to Lisbon. The ships had been converted from cargo carrying to sail training ships. However, their future seemed uncertain and the purpose of the gathering was to mark the passing of the age of the sail. What happened instead was that the sailing ships refused to say goodbye and two years later they raced again and the fleet was even larger. It was then that the title The Tall Ships was given to them and the name remains today. The original organisers, the Sail Training Ship International Race Committee, now called the Sail Training Association, 
saw that a new international movement had begun, adventure training under sail. As race succeeded race, it became clear that the events had more to do with bringing adventure and widening the horizons of young people than of commemorating the passing of sail. Now, sail training ships began to be specially built and young people from all walks of life wanted to participate. Now, to compete, a vessel has to satisfy just three requirements. It has to have a minimum waterline length of 9.09 metres. Half its crew must be between the ages of 16 and 25, and its principal means of propulsion must be a sail. Since 1972, the race has been sponsored by Cutty Sark Scott's Whiskey, and it has started to attract huge crowds of spectators. In 1984, more than 250,000 people lined the River Mersey in Liverpool to watch the fleet set off. And in 1986, two million spectators joined Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth at Newcastle-upon-Tyne to watch the parade. 1989 was the year that the spectacular Cutty Sark Tall Ships Race started from London. A grand fleet of up to 100 vessels gathered on the River Thames, near Tower Bridge, on Tuesday the 4th of July. The only thing that the racing yachts, ancient and modern, had in common was their young crews. Few were expert sailors, and the majorities were strangers to the sea and to each other. Between Tuesday the 4th of July, when the fleet began to assemble, and Saturday the 8th of July, when the ships took part in a grand parade of sail down the River Thames, vessels were berthed on either side of Tower Bridge. Some were moored in the Pool of London, opposite the Tower of London, while others were moored to the east of Tower Bridge. Smaller vessels were accommodated in St Catherine's Dock. Many of the larger ships were open to the public. It was an amazing and historic spectacle as the ships sailed slowly up the River Thames. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics listening, reading, practice test, and speaking, you got guesswork. Please guys, participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com. The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, then please join my telegram channel. So guys, please write your score below the comment section. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all guys. Stay tuned. Stay safe.